Do you want me to go in? Good morning from Always in Stitches. My name is Nancy, and um, I work here, obviously. And I just got back from market on Sunday about 6 o'clock, and I was back in here on Monday checking in all of our goodies. And I wanted to share with you some of the things that we got that were not in our pre-orders. I did go a little rogue at market. Um, and I knew I would because once you get into the suites and you see what the designers have brought and you see their samples and... I kind of go with the idea of, well, if there's more that I see, I'll go ahead and pick it up. So that's kind of what I did. And from the pile here, you know I did that a lot. But what they say is what happens at market stays at market. So um, Is that why you've been so quiet since you got back? <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe that. And I have a lot of work to do. <laughs> um, I am trying to get through the, the patterns as quickly as I can, getting your special orders together and getting everything to the floor. I have set Alex with the task today of clearing off the new wall, finding homes for all of those patterns. And I'm, I'm going to need more room than what the new wall is going to afford me. So be patient with me. We do have it in the building. I'm just trying to get it processed and out. I did have two, I think, maybe four patterns that I had to have shipped to me. So um, I didn't think that was really that bad. It just goes to show that those were very popular patterns. So I know one is on the way. I did get an email. Hopefully it's here today. Hopefully when the mailman knocked on the door, that's what he brought me. So I will get a lot more special orders. I know they're trickling out, but I'm doing the best I can. So without further ado, we will get on to this. Um, I did talk to the, was it the Wednesday group, Stitchers group? I believe so. And I told them I was being nice to the 40 count Stitchers because that is the awesome fabric I brought back. This is from Rogue fabric workshop. They are based out of Texas right now, but they're getting ready to open a dyeing shop in Louisville. So this is all 40 count. This is Violet Fizz. And it, it was kind of funny because Michael, who I believe he, he runs a business or he's somewhere in the business, but he said that they're, they fashion these from drink recipes. So um, I asked if he brought free samples and he said no. And I said, well, that's just not right. So this one is Violet Fizz and it is a gorgeous violet color. I mean, these are all, this is their spring collection and it's a very beautiful, beautiful purple. I can see a lot of different patterns being done on this one. So that's 40 count Violet Fizz. This is 40 count frostbite. Look at that. This one, you can't really tell a lot of the, the variegation in the dyeing because it is such a pastel color, but I, it almost, ma almost makes me want to stitch on 40 count. I'm just not there yet. So after frostbite, we have honeydew spritz. It's a very pretty springy green. And I don't know that there were specific patterns that the designers had used these on. And look at this peach bellini. Look how pretty that is. Does that make you want to stitch on 40 count, Peter? It makes me want to go to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> and sit on the beach with Cappy. <laughs> and um, I, I'm going to assume that these will be cut in our traditional, in our these typical will be fat cut eight and fat quarters. Two fat quarters and four fat eights. Cool. And um, I'm, this is the first time we have ordered from, from Rogue Fabrics. However, on World Cross Stitch Day, we have a trunk show coming in from them that you will be able to buy their fabrics. Um, there'll be a, a variety of sizes and a variety of counts. So um, I'm looking forward to that. So if any of you 40 count stitchers come in and buy this and stitch something on it, let me know how it is. If it's a really good fabric, we will uh, continue to look into what they have to offer. I've seen their booth and they have some beautiful fabrics. 
So. And what month is uh, World Cross Stitch Day August. in? August. I can't come up with the date right now. My oh, brain's that's just... why I asked what month. Yeah, it's just like so the people can start first, thinking I say about it. It's the first Friday in August. And we only keep it open for 25 people because that's all we can fit in the room. So the first 25, when it's released, you get the spot. Uh, Manny Di Donna, I believe she's from Italy. She always has a couple different fabrics. And this one, it's 36 count. And it's called Frog Gray. Wow, there's so much you can do with that. Oh, yeah. I mean, Peter, I see you stitching something Halloween-ish on there. Or something very primitive. I think primitive for me. I think yeah. this would be great for primitive. And this I is, mean, it looks like it came from the turn of the century. They dyed it so well. Yeah. So this is 36 count. And it's called Frog Gray. And we have the traditional cuts, fat eights and fat quarters. And then, speaking of the beach, Peter, this one is called The Beach. And it gives you the, the water and the sand look to it. Wow. Um, I, I'd almost buy a fat eighth just to sit and look at it. <laughs> Only an eighth? Well, yeah. I want everybody else to have a chance. <laughs> right, to get right, something. right. Yeah, of course. Because a lot of times wow. what they, you know, run for market, they may not mm. die again. So it has got great character. It does. I mean, you could do a beach scene on this. You could do, gosh, a lot of things. So those are for Manny D. Donna. So you could say you have imported linen. <laughs> okay. Finishing stuff or patterns? Ooh, finishing. Okay. We talked to Chantel from Chantel's 141. She is a wonderful gal. Um, they were very nice. They even let us come into their booth before they were supposed to be open. So I thought that was great. We were able to spend some time talking to them, hearing about their company. Um, they're making their website easier for us to order from. So um, a lot of designers are using their finishing products, their boards, and they have a lot of great ideas. So we picked some up that go with patterns that we purchased. So Gathering Wildflowers from Hands On Design, she uses these round paddles and there's three of them that come in a um, a package which will do the three that um, Kathy has released now I believe the gathering series was a club prior to market so if you used they called them earth magnets they glued a magnet on the back and then on the back of their piece of needlework, they had a magnet. So then they just put it on the board, and then you can swap out for every single um, series that you would do with these. Um, Kathy did say from Hands On Design that she paints these a chalkboard black and then uses kind of a pearl finish coat on it. So it's not real shiny, but it gives it just a little bit of sparkle. So that was her finishing tip on that. That's a good tip. Thanks yeah. for sharing that. This one, I think this is called their Everything Board, which um, really you could put anything on it. Again, using the magnets on the back and on the back of your piece. This one goes with um, Teresa Kogut's Needleworkers Oath. And you have the little hoop here that... Um, I believe there's a little part in the pattern that you would stitch and the the gal in the picture holds this. So this is a good board. Um, there was another one, it was a board very similar to this but it had a star and it goes with, um, I'm pulling these out of my brain and there's a whole bunch of them in there. Um, shoot, I didn't get the board because I turned around after I paid her and saw it and went, ugh. I'll get it off the website. But we will have it for that other pattern that I can't think of yet. And I'm sure I will think of it. Now this one, this is called the Folk Board. And this goes with Hands-On Designs series. It's a, a seasonal series and she released the spring one. 
So again, you would do the magnets on the back. You'd probably do three because your stitching piece would go. Um, you'd have a little bit of space around the edges. But this is a great board. You can leave it as is or you could stain it. Ooh. Um, I don't know that I would paint it because I would be afraid of losing the stars and the stitches. Your suggestion of stain, though, is spot on. Yeah, and then Kathy from Hands On Design, she gave us another great tip. So that's a good thing about going to market. You can talk to the designers and they give us their little tips and tricks that they use. But after you stitch your piece and you need just a little something something up here, what she did is she took her ribbon and looped it to look like a bow. And then she took a pin that um, would come from just another button company and she would stick it through the ribbons and then stick it in between the two uh, your stitched piece and your backing piece. Hmm. So then, if you needed that, if you were done with it and you needed it for another thing, you'd take it over and stick it in your other piece that you want to display. So, good economical tip there. So, that allows you to change out the bows and try yep. different things mm -hmm. and display the same cross stitch, but yet embellish it differently it each up. time you put. Yep. That's cool. You yep. know, could you say that that right there was worth the price of admission to the Absolutely. Needlework market. Absolutely. Kathy always has a lot of great ideas. So um, in her booth, she had um, she has a, a series on strawberries. And this year's was called Blackberries. But in her display, she had these berries that were like this big around at the top. And they were probably about that long. And I was sitting there looking at them. And um, there was a pause in her presentation. I said, Kathy? did you make those berries? And she said, yeah. And I said, you used a vintage tablecloth, didn't you? And she said, yeah. She was kind of surprised that I recognized it as a vintage tablecloth. And I said, I would not have the heart to cut a vintage tablecloth. But if you found one that maybe had some holes in it, but had a lot of good space to it, you could definitely make you some big berries. I'm, I'm thinking about that one. So that was my finishing and that was the fabric. Now on to the patterns. This is not all of the extra patterns I got. This is just what I've been able to get through in the last few days. I've also been trying to get the other merchandise that UPS and FedEx has been bringing me out on the floor too. So I'm having to split my time. Um, talked with um, Beth from I feel like I'm on a first name basis with these guys. Oh, just to clarify. <laughs> so everything that Cappy shows in the What's New has come across your desk. Oh, good. Good. Right? I hope so. No, everything that, meaning that you're so busy, every, anybody that watches the What's New video, all the content that they're seeing, all that has come across your desk. That's why okay. it, that's why it takes you the time that it takes you to be able to do all the yeah. things to, that you do to get all the things yeah, yeah. All, the, all the all the things yeah all the things but i was sincerely hoping beyond hope that summer house stitches would not put out a fragments in time shame on me i told beth that and she she had the same look that you did peter she's like oh no you will have fragments in time from now to eternity so right now i'm only Two series behind, so you know, I don't think that's that bad. That's not bad. Mm -hmm. However, this one is a 10 year anniversary series and it is called, um, what did she call it? It's not on here. But it's houses. And these are all, how do I need to tilt this so you don't get a glare? How's that? Perfect. These are all houses, they are family homes of, um, Beth's and in her booth she had the actual picture of the home that she designed the cross stitch after. So you can do these individually as pillows or you can um, do flat finishing or you can do them all in one big piece which is what I prefer to do. That way I'm not chasing pillows all over the place. Um, again she has a free border design on her website. So I'm excited about this because, of course, the first one's a log cabin. And I would give anything to have a log cabin. So that was number one. And this is number two that was released. 
And I wish she would have put the names of the houses on here. Because I'm not seeing it. Do you see it, Peter? I'm sure when you download her, um, her border that you, she would say which homes these are. But I think they're going to go in chronological order. Obviously, the, the log cabin was one of the first. And that's a good-sized log cabin. That's a two-story log cabin. There's a photograph. Does that have a different photograph in the back? See that photograph right there? Does that have a different photograph or the same photograph? It has the same one back here, but then there's two more. So, but that doesn't, that might be a later one. Oh, you think they're clues for like the next I do. in the series? I do. That's, because, some, that's see, some really good sleuthing. Yeah, there's not that much here as far as photos. Now this picture looks like the second oh, one. It does. Or it could be this one. I don't know. We will figure out the mystery by the next video, and I will let you know. Yeah. Okay. I have sleuthing to do. All right. Yarn Tree does um, exclusive patterns with some of the designers, and you can only get them through Yarn Tree, even though that designer may be at market. So I did pick up a couple, and please forgive me. I will not pronounce this oh, designer because wow. they are from France, I believe. But look at those sweet little birds. Some of this has been translated on the back. Uh, she uses DMC, uh, 35 count fabric. And I just thought it was cute. That's, that's really cute. Has a lot of potential, what you could do with it. It could be the top of a pin cushion. It could be just a little pillow. It could be a, a small framed piece that you just tuck in somewhere. Good ideas with that one. A fox and rabbit from across the pond. They brought Wilhelmina, which I think she is cute. That's awesome. Rabbit. This is done on 32 count fabric with DMC floss. These people were very nice. I don't think that there was one designer that we went into their booth that was not very pleasant, very willing to talk. Um, as I get down through here, I'll tell you about Ardith Designs. Oh my gosh, she was a riot. She had a pattern called Disco Chicks, which were little chicks that had um, disco balls. They were either sitting on them, holding them, oh. or whatever. And her room was decorated with disco balls, aluminum Christmas trees, and bright colors. Her logo is a rainbow, so there were rainbows, and her personality matched her room. She was so fun. We, we stopped in a couple times just to talk to her because she was so fun to talk to. She had this, um, I believe it was like a photo op place where I had this big rainbow and a brightly colored seat and this big stuffed rubber duck. And I think we stopped in there Sunday and he, he was pretty exhausted. He would not sit up. He was tired. So she was a lot of fun. Um, another exclusive is from Tiny Modernist. It's called Love Grows Here. And this is done on 28 count. And it looks like DMC or Anchor Floss. I think, yeah. And that's a good one. Tiny Modernist had some some good modern pieces, but they were they were cute. I enjoyed I enjoyed them and I enjoyed um, bringing them back. Now, under the Garden Moon, we we walked past their booth. I hadn't pre-ordered anything. And it wasn't until Sunday that I said, Deborah, let's stop in there. Well, they knew us immediately. They said, oh yeah, you bought all of our quilt patterns. And I went, okay, I remember several quilt patterns here in the shop, but they have branched into cross-stitch wool and punch needle. And the wonderful thing about how they have done this, they will have a cross stitch pattern, which I will show you here, and then they will also have that same pattern in wool. So if you don't do cross stitch, you can still do the pattern in wool, or vice versa, you don't do wool, and you get them 
you have the opportunity to do either one. So this one is called Easter Ornaments, which they're very easy, very cute. Um, these are done on 32 count linen, which just remember, you can also do it on 16. You could really do it on any size fabric, but it's gonna change the size of the egg. Um, uses wool balls, pom-poms, or decorative spacers, anything you would wanna put in between there. And they had them individually. They had just some of them, or they had all of them together. So you get all of those patterns for each of these eggs in here. So its counterpart is the wool Easter ornaments. So these use different colors of wool, uses your spring colors, which honestly, we were hoping that the weather in Nashville was better than here. <laughs> it was exactly the same as here. It was rainy, it was cold, it was yuck. So we didn't get away from it. Okay, on their Halloween ornaments, here's your cross stitch, and then here is your wool. Now one, I was looking for how they did their wool, is they have three of them in a vertical. Um, this one right here, how it's vertical instead of in a swag or individual. And I thought, well, that, that was pretty cute. If you just had that much space, then you could just do that that one. Deborah's peeking around here. She and I survived. So Barely. Candy corn. Yes, we're moving on to the candy corn. Now, this pattern is Deborah's fault. <laughs> she got stuck on candy corn and would not let it go. So this is a punch needle pattern, and in it you get all 12 of those designs. And she told me I had to do the candy corn for her. And I said, well, how about you learn how to do punch needle and you do the candy corn for you? And she kept shaking her head and telling me no. So I'm, I'm not sure if I'll get her to do the punch needle. Did Deborah see the dish that it was put in? Oh, she did. Oh yeah. <laughs> she said, oh look, there's candy corn in the jar. I'm like, yes, Can I borrow Deborah. this? Uh-huh. Okay, either they put a ball lid on a oh. jar that's not a ball jar, or that's a ball jar I've never seen. What they did is they took a jar, and then you can get the frogs that are the lids that just have wires in there. It's not a glass frog, but it's a, a metal one. And I think that's what they did. I've seen those in antique stores. That's cool. Yeah, so um, they're on wires with some ribbon, probably a felt or wool background. So yeah, I guess I'll be doing candy corn for Deborah. Okay, and here's another example. This is called Happy Jack. This is the punch needle, and this is the wool pattern. So this kind of gives you the possibility that if you have wool patterns that you like, but you don't really want to do it in wool, you could also do it in punch needle. So there's, there's a double duty use for your wool patterns. And then because we didn't have any, we had to get Happy Snow Day. And this is also wool and punch needle. So it's a crossover. You get both patterns and instructions in each pattern. So I think that's a pretty good deal. You get two for the price of one. And we're fully stocked on, I just looked, we're fully stocked on the punch needle. I can't think of what do we call punch. it. The ultra punch punch yes. needle, which comes with the three needles and the threader. Right. Guess what I bought while I was gone. What? We made a stop at a quilt shop, and they had the smart punch needles, which is the ergonomic punch needle. Uh huh. And I had been wanting to purchase one oh. to give it a Test. try, see if we want to carry it here in the shop. I haven't gotten it out of the box. Well, yeah, I have because I was playing with it. Um, but I'm excited about trying that out to see how that works. So if you can't hold the the pin-like ultra punch needle, this is, it's probably about shaped this way. And it's got spots where you would put your thumb so you'll have your needle going the right way. So I'm anxious to try it. And I'll, I'll let you know how it goes. Okay, this is another really cute idea. And I like the fact that they combine 
designs in one pattern. This is Spring Has Sprung, and you get three assorted needle rolls. So you get a bluebird, a bunny, or a lamb. So you can make all three for yourself, just your favorite one for yourself, and you could give two to your friends. Or... Those are cute. You can make multiples of all of them. I did buy a kit so I could make a sample for here in the shop. Those are cute. And it's the bunny. So these were really cute. And this I'm really excited about. And you're going to kind of laugh if you've been cross-stitching for a long time. Because this pattern takes <laughs> 10 count 8 o'clock. Yay! So, and this one crosses boundaries too because if you're a quilter and you've not really done any cross stitch, this is a really good beginner project because you can combine your two crafts. This is a take along stitcher's mat. Oh, cool. And the premise to this is that you pick out your fabric for the mat and then you match your colors for the cross stitch. How's that, Peter? Oh, did that just blow your mind? It did. <laughs> I could see it. I freaking love it. <laughs> so I was oh, pretty excited about gosh. this. Oh, my gosh. You know what I'm instantly drawn to for this mat? What's that? Is that Teresa Kogut bunny fabric. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. And then, yeah, I got to look the right. This right here, they you can use. But the pattern might be too big because this uses a, t a small ditzy floral. Oh, I'm sure that there's so smaller the, prints. So the cross stitch stands out, though. That's yeah. cool. This can be velvet. Yes, wool, velvet. Or felt. And this is where this is your Oort map, where oh, you I put your it. little tails that you clip off. I'd have to use that uh, fancy velvet that we have. There you go. What is that potato? I think that's the color. Uh huh. Yeah, it's brown. So you got to choose something that's got brown in your fabric. But I was excited about this, and the more I kind and of thought about it. And there's a scissor slot. Yeah, scissors, rulers. There's two little pockets. So oh, are they stacked? There. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, and look, it's got rickrack trim on the. Yep. On and the it pocket. Goes around here. Oh, let me get that rickrack trim. You gotta, you gotta get that rickrack trim on that pocket. Oh man. Yeah. And it's got rickrack. Uh huh. I didn't go to market with a class idea. Oh. But I kind of came home with this one and went, hmm. I'll have to think about this one. Man. So I thought that was. Oh, oh. Oh, uh oh. What? The needle minder hanging from a bow. Look. Yep. Or your needle threader. Oh, that's a needle minder. But you could hang your needle threader from that. It's from a bow. Yeah. That's cool. Um, this was another Yarn Tree exclusive, and this is from Pansy Patch Quilts. Yeah. It says, Come Stitch in My Garden. It was really cute. I really enjoyed this one. Love the color of that fabric yeah. that's on. Um, that golden yellow color. Let's see, they used... Oh, it's your favorite. Vintage Country Mocha. Man. This is on 36 count. You know, it's just the way the pinks and the reds look yeah. on it. And guess what? It's DMC Floss. So. I love all the little birds on the flowers. Yeah. That's fun. And she says on the pattern, the inspiration for this design comes from her countless afternoons spent stitching with my friends in my backyard garden. So yeah, come stitch in my garden. I hope I can do that this summer. I started a new cross stitch when I got home. Who would have thought? But, I mean, it's kind of hard not to. I mean, you just yeah. get back from market. But it was and, something out of my stash that had been calling oh. my name for a long time. Um, it was. Was it a fragments in time? No, it wasn't. <laughs> but it, it deals in time because it's the. Um, I think it's called Signs of Spring, from Cottage Garden. Am I getting that right? I think. Yeah. But it's the robin who's sitting on top of the basket. Oh, cool. And I have the the hanging leaves on the left side done, the robin's head, and I'm working on his chest, which is really cool because I thought, okay, what are those other little symbols in there? I can't figure out the pattern. But then as I was stitching the, the main color, it's like, oh, it's like a little star pattern. I thought, well, that's going to be cute. 
So yeah, that's that's all I did after I got home from work and fixed dinner. I sat for probably two and a half hours and cross-stitched. Good for you. So, it was needed. Okay, Silver Creek Samplers. We've had a few of their patterns here in the shop. This one caught my eye and it's called Home With You. And they did this on, let's see, they don't say. 18 count oh this is 18 count buttermilk from fiber on a whim and it looks like all DMC floss so and I think you can put the date yeah on it established so, it has a yeah. place right next to the key in the heart right so like when you bought your first home you could put that date on there if you're married you could put that date on there um, there's a lot of things you could put the date on for, but there was that one. And of course I could not walk away from Christmas. So this is Spruce It Up Christmas Tree Farm, which is done on 18 count caramel macchiato from Fiber on a Whim. It's Ada. Uh, it's all Weeks Dye Works with DMC conversions on here. This was really cute. I couldn't walk away without it. Yeah, I like the words on their patterns. Uh -huh. um, you know how it's so trendy to have those little blocks? Yeah. Like in offices and stuff, and they have different words and sayings, and there's places that, yeah, that I can see instead of one of those name blocks like that. Yeah. So that was fun. That's cool. Lucy Beam. Um, let, me, let me hope I get this right. Went into her spot because I did have some special orders from her and this was one called long may you stitch and this is done on 36 count cream and sugar from fiber on a whim using DMC floss and I'm pretty sure I've got this right but um, Lucy beams daughter I can't think of her name I stood and talked with her for a while. She was at market last year for the first time with Lappin Loops, which is a fabric dyeing company. And it was really cool talking with her because she was so excited about her business. Um, being a new business, she has narcolepsy. So holding down a full-time job was hard for her because she has to take a lot of naps during the day. So her husband had lost his job and had looked for work for about three months. And then they kind of got the thought together of like, hey, we could take this fabric dyeing company full time. So they have been so successful due to customers that she has been able to devote her entire time to dyeing fabrics and so has her husband. She told me, that her table was stacked like halfway up to the wall at when they opened on Friday and she only had piles this high on her table. It had been such a successful market for her and I am so glad she found her niche and her fabrics were very pretty. So I'm going to be looking into possibly getting some more of her fabrics in here and um, helping to support somebody who is you know, taken lemons and made lemonade out of it. So good for you, Lap and Loops. Okay, Primitive Hair. They came from across the pond too, I believe. Um, I believe they are from Italy. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. But I had looked at this pattern for a while and it wasn't until I saw it in their booth that I thought, yeah, I think we need that. It's called Miss Cupid. And it's several little pillows, or you can, oh, there's so many things you could do with them. She uses DMC Gentle Arts, and it looks like Krynik. And this is done on 30 count Old Salem linen. Yes, did you have a comment? <laughs> yeah. Oh, what's that? I thought that little pillow said, love is hard. <laughs> Well, sometimes it is. <laughs> Love is kind. <laughs> it, it, in your defense, it is kind of hidden. So, 
but I just I like the the red which she uses it's a gentle arts buckeye scarlet but I thought that was just it just pops out it does especially in the letters on that yeah love it's great for those letters and on on the dress um, for Miss Cupid okay what was I looking at the a color that Oh, I know. I was looking to see what the... Okay, she doesn't say on here what the um, the pom-poms are. But I'm sure we could get that from Lady Dot or Dames of the Needle. And I thought that was a harp, and I was trying to figure that out, but it's actually a bow. It's a bow. <laughs> <laughs> we try to test Peter Daly oh, to man. see if he can figure things out. <laughs> but for him, love is hard. Love is hard. <laughs> okay, back to Summer House. Darn it, she brought out another series. That's pretty. But there's only three in this one, so I think I can I can keep up with this one. And this is called The Greatest of These. And this one is Faith, and Hope and Love Will Follow. She did this on 40 Count Milk and Honey using DMC. Uh, the trim is Grubby Frog Rayon Ribbon by Lady Dot. And... Uh, I just thought this was, this kind of goes along with her seasonal one that she had before. It was like Winter Awakens, and she used the floss that variegated or ombre through the piece. So I'm kind of anxious to, to start on this one. It'll be fun to watch how it, it changes. It is so change. pretty with yeah. the, that really light blue and that dark blue mm -hmm. and that green. It's so pretty. Uh, let's see, there's a blue navy. Oh. Olive, golden olive, and a gray green. Those are the three colors. Very well done. So yeah. Um, I'm sorry. What count is it on? This was done on 40 count milk and honey. And it's not a bad stitch count. It's 110 by 89. So it's not huge. She had them in. In made into pillows. Obviously Is she given like dimensions for different count sizes yes. on the back? So What's does she go to fourteen? No, she doesn't. No. I'm just thinking how stunning that would be on like a nice size cloth. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. And put that on the couch. Yeah. Yeah. So that was have great. the whole set. Yeah. There's three, so you kind of have to figure out. Oh, you're thinking of a pillow? Yeah, like a good size pillow, uh -huh. like on a 14 or maybe that 10 count to get it real yeah. big. If you have a cross stitch calculator, you could figure that out. I have that. Okay, so you could go figure that one out. I'm filming right now, though. Oh, I'll have to figure it out later. Okay, figure it out later. <laughs> okay, samplers and primitives, they are a new designer to us. Um, these were distributed through a company called Willow Ann. She was very pleasant. Um, I, I still have to figure out, I mean, I know like Hoffman distributors and those big companies, how they distribute, but she was just one person. And she was distributing for, I believe, like about seven designers. So I thought, hey, you go. You found your niche. That's pretty cool. So are these people that maybe the big distributors don't carry, and that's her niche? Possibly. It, oh, I like Very this. Very possibly. I'm They're telling you, I'm liking companies. what I'm looking at. That's oh, beautiful. <laughs> I can't stop. Don't look, Peter. <laughs> it's, just so, it's just so primitive. I love it. Okay, this is called A Celebration of Spring. This one is that's done. That's so pretty. Uh, it's called Baby Sheep by... Juju Designs. Um, I'm not sure what the model was stitched on. It doesn't say. But she gives you the um, 28 to 40 count dimensions. Uh, DMC, Weeks and Gentle Art Floss. Classic Color Works. So that's a... Like you said, Peter, it's a good print. Is it just me? But it almost looks like it's envelope finished. Like, so it's not stuffed like real full like a pillow, but yet it's almost like there's something in it, maybe like a piece of batting or something. Yeah, because right along here, 
it's very flat looking, yeah. but yet not flat looking. Like it's right. It's got this air of mystique to it. But you know what we can do? What can we do? We can open it. Oh. Hey, the advantage is working here. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Let's tear into this one. How'd they do that? Okay. Pattern. Aw, Peter. We'll email them later. We can go on her website. Yeah. Um, she has Instagram. And also, did I see? Yeah, she has a website that we can go on and see how she finished them because it looks like the next one i'll show you you know what it looks like it looks like she has stitched around the outside uh -huh. after it has been made into a pillow it's a uh -huh. little easier to see on this one this one is called home uh 36 count cream linen uh 28 to 40 count dmc weeks general arts classic color works i wonder if they're the same colors no, but if you look real close down here along the bottom and up in the side, you can see it looks like it's been stitched. So maybe it was lightly stuffed as a pillow and then to kind of give it a flange, it, um, they stitched around that. Or... I'd love to see what the backing looks like. Is it self-backed or is it a fabric-backed? We got some sleuthing to do. She lets you decide. I know, but... I know. But see, it says samplers and primitives. So yep. I, you, I just have to have that primitive look to it, like with that stitching and that texture and that, you know, that the way this is done. And I even wonder if it is linen-backed. Yeah. <laughs> Or is it old pillow ticking because it's primitive, see, yeah. and you're using what you got. Yeah, but I'm not seeing, like, usually you can see a peak of something, and I'm seeing a peak of linen. this color. Right in there I can see it. Mm -hmm. Sorry, samplers unless, and primitives unless, are tearing apart unless, <laughs> unless she artfully, you know, in um, sewing when you do clothing yeah. on a collar and you roll it with your thumb towards the back ever so slightly so you don't see yeah. it from the front. She's pretty good. She's real good. So yeah, I'm I'm excited to see these done up. Those are beautiful. Yeah, if you buy any Those of make me our, happy. our patterns we brought back from market and you get started on it, bring it in. Let us see it. Post pictures on um, Always in Stitches. We want to see your work. Tag us on the gram. Yeah, it seems like we can get a lot of pictures of quilters. We want to see your cross stitches. We'll put those on there too. Okay, Blue Flower. Hmm. Yeah, Blue Flower had a lot of great ideas, had a lot of great pre-orders, and then I walked into their booth. And right there at the door, it called my name. Uh-huh, I see why. <sighs> it says, I heard the mountain wind conversing with the trees. This is called Happy Campers. <sighs> That's my log cabin. And it was funny, Cindy was looking at this. God, I love and this. If you look at the top, you have probably what that would be, maybe a beaver and a hedgehog roasting marshmallows. You have squirrels at the picnic table. You have a fox and what, maybe a badger canoeing and a bear coming out of the tent. How cute is that? And then the border. Yeah, you have. There's a ram climbing a ram. the border. You have your lantern. You have your direction signs. On the other side, you have a moose. Look at the moose. You've got a probably what's a red-winged blackbird on what looks like cattails. You have a bee and a oh. hummingbird. There's so much in this to see. The moths up at the top and the moon and the stars and the trees. And the flag. And the mountains. And the, and the trailer. Uh, the mountains, yeah. The, tra the campers. Oh, my goodness. I'm exhausted. That's fun. That's fun. That yeah. is so much fun. This was done on 40 count light mocha, and it is beautiful. That's beautiful. Um, let's see. DMC floss, weeks, and crescent colors. Has a few 
It's got Algerian eyelets. Not that, those might be in the trees. The trees or the flowers, maybe. And some straight stitches. And otherwise, I'm, I'm on my way here. See you later. <laughs> okay, one of our... Do you have a cabin wall? I am going to have a okay. cabin bedroom. You know how we have in the cross-stitch department, I like to call it the red work wall, mm -hmm. where it's got like two samples? A red work or maybe three do you have a cabin or a cabin wall where you like all your cross stitch that has cabins on it goes on that wall <laughs> it, it will be going in my bedroom we are slowly changing it over to a cabin room yeah um haven't gotten very far but i'm i'm pushing my husband that you need way. one of those antique um lanterns like what's hanging on in the border actually we do have one oil lamp it belonged to my husband's grandfather wow. who worked on the railroad. Oh, wow. And it's got the red glass in it. Oh, cool. And he, he keeps it in a box. And I said, let's get it out and use oh. it to decorate. But now I think I figured it out. Because when I got home, my husband hadn't talked to anybody for, I think, three days. So he was nonstop talking. And I'm like, just let me sit down. But he said, come upstairs. I, I have to show you something. And, and I don't want you to be upset. And I'm like, What'd you do? <laughs> I don't want you to be upset. <clears throat> well, he he was being good. He was trying to clean the window in our bedroom. And we had this antique lamp that belonged to his grandmother. It had a gorgeous, it was a real thick glass shade to it that had what looked like a mountain scene around it. It had oranges and the the silhouette colors. It was just a really pretty lamp. And I remember every room it was in at his grandmother's house. He knocked the shade off and broke it. He said I almost cried. And I looked at him and all that was going through my mind was, I'm glad it was you and not me. So he said, well, now we have something else to look for when we go antiquing. And I'm like, we'll just buy a new lamp. So I'm not sure how that's going to go, but... We'll get that replaced somehow. So some of you know Donna Sarver. She worked here at the shop for a while. And if you didn't know, she used to own a cross-stitch store. Well, she, she tackles these humongous pieces that scare me to death. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, I saw this pattern that she ordered, a, a model done of it. Oh my gosh, it is beautiful. It's called Majestic Lace. It wow. looked just like lace. Wow. I mean, it was incredible. Uh, this was, this, oh, and I didn't even realize this. This was done on 36 count Concord, which gives you the purple. And uh, it did three skeins of DMC Blanc. Floche, F-L-O-C-H-E. We had not heard that of that, so we had to do a little investigation for that. But it is amazing how it turned out, and I'm very anxious to see what it looks like when Donna gets done. So, mm. hey, Donna, if you're watching, this is your first project you need to get started <laughs> on. And then on the back, it shows how they just took some of the motifs out of it and just did individual so there's options. You don't have to do the whole thing. They took them out of this border here. You could take the center piece out and just do that. What are those things that they put around napkins at fancy Napkin sit rings. down? Yeah. Yeah. Hand stitched so. oh my. on linen for a napkin ring. <laughs> Next that. time you invite your guests over for your Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> For all 20 of your grandkids. No, you know what they're going to get, Peter? They're going to get twine. Primitive. Think primitive. Oh, yeah, primitive. Yeah. Okay, and this one is Deborah's but we were, fault. We were being fancy with the lace. No, no, my grandkids don't get fancy. They're just down-to-earth kids, so. Um, Deborah, this one's your fault, too. This is done by Works by ABC. I think we have had one or two here in the shop of theirs, but not very many. But this one is called Nesting Dolls. Oh, look at that. They're also called Matrushka. If I slaughtered that, I'm sorry. 
Here's your dolls, Debra. What? Here's your dolls. I'm anxious to see Debra get started on these. But they're done on perforated paper. So you get those in the kit. You get your paper and the pattern. And all three dolls can be made out of two pieces. Are you pulling it out? No, I was, I was just feeling it. Oh. Um, so these are all DMC colors. And I believe it's 14 count perforated paper. Very doable. I expect Deborah to have a model done here for the shop soon. So that was fun. And then we did have... If y'all have met Alex, hmm. he uh, he had to have. <laughs> <laughs> it was from the Elegant Thread, and it was called Mobsta. And it was a lobster that has his little hat on, cigar coming out of his mouth. He's got his Tommy gun. They've got a little $100 bill charm and some handcuff charms. And it says Mobsta at the bottom. He had to have that, and, and it looks like Alex. And he had just ordered the pattern, but when we talked to him, they said, oh, you've got to get the charm pack. I went, well, yeah. So that was a surprise we brought back for him. But he, he and Peter, they were looking at the gun. <laughs> and what did you decide he was, a 1990s mobster? So on the bottom of the pattern, it says a 1920s lobster from Maine. And I'm just thinking, man... These elegant thread people, like, they have so much creativity. This is so whimsical, so much fun. And, yeah, we decided that it wasn't a <laughs> 20s um, lobster from Maine. It was a 1990s lobster from Maine. Okay, maybe the, the, the gun was a later version, but I think... The lobster was probably a 1920s. But she has a whole series of lobster stitches, so we got to hear the story about that. They have a whole series of lobsters? Uh-huh. Does Alex know this? No. Um, <laughs> but the This makes me want to do the series. <laughs> I mean... The designer... Oh, if it's starting with the 20s, I mean, i got to have the series. <laughs> the, um, the designer, I guess, has a, a house in Maine. I'm not sure exactly where they're from, but she said she goes there like four times a year. And it's like, I would go to Maine four times a year. I've been to Maine once, and it was absolutely beautiful. I, I could live there in a log cabin in the woods. So another one by Works by ABC, and this was, this was an Alex one. And it's very interesting. And, it, and I don't say that in a... A mean way because the way the stitches are done look what it does this is called oh. cherry blossoms you have your main design oh my god but then you have another design layered on top of it do you know they totally um encapsulated that concept and that theme because mm -hmm. i can picture like um in they have the cherry blossom festival in China when the cherry blossoms are just, it just looks like it's snowing cherry blossoms. Uh -huh. That's exactly what this cross stitch gives you that feeling of. Yeah. As if you're walking amongst the cherry blossom trees. Wow. Yep. Gentle Arts. Wow. With the DMC conversion. Um, they did this on 32 count white Jobelin. So it just gives you a whole different look. Wow. You take the layers apart. I think I, I like said it. that wrong. I think it's Cherry Blossom Festival in Japan. Now I'm confused. I don't know. I don't well, know. I was people. thinking Washington, so. <laughs> it's yeah, a but during. I, whenever they heavily fall, you know it because there's a lot of pictures on social media. So. Yeah. And I just don't. I can't remember if it's Japan or China. Yeah. But man. At Market, Summerhouse Stitchworks shared their suite with. Noteworthy needle. These gals are good friends. They they can finish each other's sentences. And it's like, that's crazy. You have totally different styles here, but you can speak each other's minds. So if you have seen this in the shop, this was called Charming Christmas, and we brought this back from market last year. And Cindy made this model, and it's got all your little charms in it, which are included in the pattern. We still have some of these on the floor. 
And I fell in love with that. I mean, if you like the red, you can do it in red. You could do it in green. Um, there's a lot of versatility to this. You can make each one of these squares an ornament. Um, there's just so much you can do with it. This is beautiful. Yeah. This is a, this is a new pattern. This we brought back last year from market. But I'm showing you this. Oh, I gotcha. Because they came out with two more charming patterns. Oh. For those of you asking for birth samplers, this one's called Charming Child. And. Oh, wow. Look at that. She calls this a modern, fun, and charming birth sampler stitched with two colors. So you don't have to. You've got the length and the weight. Yeah. You don't have to use her colors. If the nursery is going to be a different color, you can substitute those colors in. And you know what the best part is, Peter? The charms. Uh, I was trying to figure out what the charms were, but I couldn't. Oh, look at that. There's a duck. There's a baby. There's a stroller. My gosh, those lamb, are adorable. A bottle. What's that other one? Feet. Oh, it looks like a onesie. A safety pin. Shoes, feet, and teddy bear. Teddy bear. Aren't those cute? Those are awesome. That's so cool. Yeah, so we have a lot of people come in and asking for um, birth samplers, and the designers really don't do those because they are so specific. But Noteworthy Needle has listened to people, and she came up with one. And then the other thing that we have people asking for are wedding samplers. Oh, cool. So guess what she did? What do we got? What do we got? Charming couple. Look at that one. I think these were both done on 32 count white linen. You can change the colors out to match the wedding colors. Um, they have, uh, well, I'm trying to think of what she told us. You could swap out the information in the middle for like a 25th anniversary, for a 50th anniversary. Um, she gives you different ideas on the back and here's your charms. You know, how cool would it be if you're a cross stitcher and you're getting married to like give this as a gift and then the idea is um, every year fill out like a new block or something like that and then hang it up on like the anniversary. Okay, let's think about that. How would you finish the piece if you only have one block done? You would have to put it in a frame in such a way that it's temporary on your board to where you could take it out and do the next block. Yeah. I mean, I hear where you're going, but I'm trying to figure out how that would work. But anyway, lots of possibilities. See, Peter even came up with one that's not even listed on here. So Charming Child and Charming Couple. Which one was the couple one? This one. This one. Yeah. I think Peter may be looking at this one by. Yeah, because there's 10 squares, 10th anniversary. I mean, that would be so cool and so special. How long have you been married, Peter? 20. You'd have to do two blocks. <laughs> you got some time to make up there. Okay, we know Shepherd's Bush. We know their project bags. And this is probably my favorite. I've liked all the other ones, but this one I'm going to make. Does this resonate with you? It yells at me. Does this Things hit, don't resonate. They does this, does this hit you in the feeler? It does. <laughs> and it's probably, well, you'll see. This is called the sampler bag. And this is done oh, cool. on the Mad for Plaid burlap, which is a tan. Beautiful color. Let's see. Can I get it out of the bag? Without... I can see the color perfectly with the wrapper. Okay. Yeah. So this is the, the tan. And let's see. Hey, look at that. 
This uses Weeks Dye Works number no. five pearl or a DMC. It uses the pearl cotton, but you can also use oh four or six strands of regular DMC floss. <sighs> You, are you feeling this one, Peter? Yeah, that's really cool. I know Lenny because it's called love Sampler, this one. Mm -hmm. and it's got the the yeah. it's got all her. You got she's like because yeah. it's got the little bee. It's got the bee. It's got your sheep. That's we neat. have a bee button. We have a dragonfly in there. There's a bird on top of the house. There's flowers. There's all kinds of fun stuff. That's really neat. So, Love it. Yeah, I think this is one we're not going to be able to keep in. No. Um, she's really, you know what? She's really got a great thing going there oh, with those does. bags. She does. We did bring in a new to us designer. Some of you may know her as a floss tuber. Um, oh, her name just fell out of my head. But she's called the Proper Stitcher. Okay, thank you. And her stuff is beautiful. Okay, so we brought back four or five of her patterns and there's one that just fit me and it says i must always always have flowers oh so i'm excited about that one i'll probably just do a little pillow out of it and um oh guess what i saw yesterday Peter? what i had gone to lunch red wing blackbird oh no no no! i see those all the time <laughs> oh but there was a bird and if anybody's from tennessee and can tell me what this bird is. Tennessee Warbler. <laughs> is there such a thing? Yes. Well, Peter, if that's what it was, you gave it away. It's probably not what it is, though. It's too early. Okay. Well, this bird, he was all over the place at the hotel. And he had kind of a grayish-brown body. And he had, like, white stripes on his wing and across his tail. I really want to know what this bird is because he had a beautiful song and he was not afraid to sing it. So anyway, back to yesterday. Okay, lunch. so in bird identification, it's also important to notate the song. Oh gosh, I couldn't. I don't know. We need the song, Nancy. <laughs> you know, the drive home kind of knocked it out of me because people were not kind on the interstate. Um. A guy flashed his lights at me to come over because I had my turn signal on. And then when I did, he just sat there in his car and shook his head at me. I went, whatever. Okay, you go ahead. So. Sounds like my morning drive to work every day. <laughs> That's why I take the back roads. Um, I was at lunch yesterday. And I was coming back. I pulled up at the light at 37. And I look up. Lowe's is right in front of me. And guess what I saw? What? Two, not one, but two Bonnie plant trucks. <gasps> that means oh, yeah. they had plants. And I I came back and I walked up to Cappy's desk and I said, Cappy, I need to leave for the rest of the day. And she got a real concerned look on her face and she goes, why? Is everything okay? And then I told her and she's like, I'm coming too. <laughs> so, Spring is coming. We do have hope. So you can do all the springy cross stitch stuff on these pretty springy fabrics and bring spring in quicker because if the bonnie plant trucks are at Lowe's, that means there are plants coming. So, um, okay, Peter. Oh, you know what I saw this morning? What'd you see? Okay, so um, hop out of the car. And when I hop out of the car, you know, I like to survey the area just to see what's once all going on. you got to work? Yeah, once okay. I got to work. So I'm in the work parking lot. On the crab apple tree, it has um, buds. Oh, Bright green buds. I know my maple trees. Have... Hasn't budded until now. Oh, they've been blooming and dropping all that junk on our driveway. And Ugh. Okay, so I had ordered 24 of the Happiness is Homemade Nashville Market cookbooks. Are they all sold out? No. Oh, good. So guess what? I want to give one away. What? I do. I do. And I'll tell you the great thing about these books. They are $14.99. You get all kinds of recipes from designers in different shops. But the best part of it is you get 45 small cross stitch patterns and some of them are really really cute this year well they're all cute but 
A lot of them spoke to me, but I could see a lot of them speaking to other people. So let's see, how do we want to give the one away, Peter? How about... You know, while you're thinking, I have a funny story. Okay. So you know how I do the subscription service for food and uh -huh. I make and I make the thing that they send? So I hadn't ever made anything with tarragon before. Oh. Have you? I think so. I don't think it's one of my favorite spices. Okay. So I had, it was like some bougie version of shepherd's pie. I don't remember what fancy name they gave it. But it was basically, you know, sautéed vegetables, and then you put a mashed potato thing on top, and then slop it in the oven. Well, it had tarragon in it. I was like, okay, well, you know, if the ingredient comes with it, my rule is it goes in the dish. Right. So I pull the tarragon out, I smell it, and it has like this warming, subtle, like, not really licorice, but that's the only closest thing I can come up with to describe it. And I'm like, wow, I've never, I've never tried this before. This is, it will be an adventure. Yeah. So I go ahead and put all of it in there because oh. it says cook with half. And then it says uh, garnish, <laughs> garnish, garnish with the other half. And so. Peter likes to live on the edge. <laughs> I, it was so good. It was so good. I was like. You know, and I even remember one year in my herb garden, I actually planted tarragon because it was a herb and I hadn't planted it before, <laughs> but I never got to use it. I never used it. it was, yeah. I just planted it and forgot about it. And then all these years, I'm thinking you about, could've... I've been missing out on tarragon. Oh, <laughs> mm. oh my, poor Peter. Okay, so here we go. Um, if you can tell me... in this segment what my most favorite pattern was and who it was by, we will send you a cookbook. Lisa, you don't know. <laughs> I'll just cook for you, how's that? <laughs> so, tell us my most favorite pattern that I've shown you in this segment. We will have another segment probably next week when I get through everything. And, um, <coughs> We might give another one away or something else away. Who knows what we'll do? I don't even know what I'll do. Yeah, that'll be fun to see. I can't wait. Yeah. So call in, order on the website, come in the shop. Hopefully I've put Alex to the task of clearing off the new wall. Hopefully he's working on that. And we'll get this out on the floor as soon as I can get it processed and ready to go. Um, if there's something you've seen here, Whoever's in cross stitch, if you come in, tell them that's what you want, and we'll bring it. We'll dig it out of the box if it's not already out on the floor. So that's all I've got for right now. I have to go back to my desk and enter in another whole great big bag of patterns that I think I totaled up to 23 shops. So I think I hit at least 50 shops. Wow. So that's a lot. Wow. In three days. So, but it was fun and we are glad to do it to bring back the great things for you. So have a great day. Dream of spring. If anybody gets to Lowe's, let me know what they have and uh, I'll see you next week.